In the last season, our journey began with the goal of piecing together the story of Mapungube and its contribution to world civilization. The sheer size of what we found not only debunked the whole myth about the origins of our identity and our civilization, and in particular Mapungube, we felt compelled to share our findings. As much as I always appreciated the stories that were being told, either about us as uh, Africans or how other people see us. And those stories have uh, always been told from an outside point, and not by the people who should be telling the stories. The people who should be telling the stories are used as props. In my studies, I started out with a very keen interest in African history and heritage. While studying cinema, I had a lot of mentors who were African scholars. So they helped me to hone in the content for filmmaking. 25,000 years before, and there was a civilization here, and I've never heard of it. Who's heard of it? Like Mapungubwe. We're not telling a story for people who know the story because we also don't know the story. We're discovering things so as we go along. A roommate of mine at university, Vivi Koka, his father, she was Tabumbeki's mentor in London, you know, when Tabumbeki was a student and he was teaching Tabumbeki Africology. Early 1900s, research had been done by the University of Pretoria where they exhumed remains of Ndatekoka's ancestors. And that led to this request. Ndatekoka asked Thabo Mbeki on his deathbed, please can you make sure that those remains that were exhumed in the early 1900s are reburied. And me being a friend to his son, in the outskirts of all of this happening, I was asked by the family, why don't you capture the process of the reburial? I got involved through Ntlantlan Tetwa because I wanted to discover the history of South Africa and he got me into the story of Mapungu boy. A few years later, I get a call from this guy and he says, my name is Ntlantlam Tetwa. Can we collaborate? Let's go for the pitch together. And I was like, wow, there's somebody who wants to tell our story and preserve. Let's go. So I went with him and we went to pitch and then the SABC commission. There were other people who came there as well, but I believe our, our pitch was strong. I changed the name. When I submitted my proposal to Mapungube, it was in the valley because I wanted those voices to come true and tell their own story. What we wanted to achieve with the second season was to move away from the site itself and hear the echoes that Mapungube itself gave in Botswana, in Zimbabwe, in Mozambique, far away as Ghana, because people came to this valley. They came and got, they mined whatever they could mine, knowledge, wisdom, and then they went away. If you go to Mapungube right now, there's a hill. But if you go away from Mapungube, you'll hear those echoes that travel through the valleys and the rivers and into the mountains and into the oceans and into far, far away land. When the first sun rose, it found us awake and waiting. Long before they came to the hills, our footsteps shaped the landscape, tamed the eland, the zebras, and the hyenas along with the gems ball. We rode the wind and silenced the hurricane. Look at us, we have been here before. Manda, we met 2000 and what, three, four? My interactions with Mandla were always about Mapungupo, you know, because I had uh, just finished at the University of Pretoria, my honours, and he wanted to make this film on uh, the burial of Mapungupo. But now with season two, it was not just on the knowledge or theorising about Mapungupo, but we actually got to work together. It was a breath of fresh air to be able to have a co-narrator and to tell 
this story not from just a male gender perspective. She brought in the feminine energy. And Tate Koka used to talk about the feminine energy being important when we talk about feeding the mind with knowledge and heritage. And the feminine energy is what gives us life. Mapu Mkupo is a microcosm of everything that's wrong about our country. All the challenges that we have, everything that you can ever imagine, whether it's about land, it's about race, or whether it's about uh, the struggle against apartheid or post-coloniality, all those things you will find in that small space of Mapungubwe. So if you were to look at it, you get to understand many things about our reality as a country. As an archaeologist from University of Pretoria, but she had to become ill-disciplined for her to be able to shake up the tree so that the murulas can come down. Her being ill-disciplined gave a lot of us courage to go to areas we didn't think about. And here I am. I was just done a Mapungube three-part series, and yet my daughter doesn't even know the importance of the story. I put in uh, the DVD, then played it on on TV. We watched. I see her focusing. She was so excited to find this information. So I wanted many people to see or to know about it. So I decided that I uh, will print a, a booklet on Mapungube. And uh, I gave my daughter two of those booklets. She came back excited. I've never been so proud of myself. I was trying to imagine she was like a hero at school. This is knowledge that's going to be saved digitally for posterity. So 50 years down the line, someone is going to look through, you know, those films and learn something. At school, we're never told or taught about these things. We always taught about your Jan van Riebeck and Hitler, which is things that are not relevant to us. And hence, we grow up not knowing who we are as people. We have such a lovely tapestry of heritage that we have not even been taught about. We don't see on the, on the airwaves. And it's an amazing thing that the SABC, they are making sure that this type of content is on the airwaves. It's incumbent upon us now to, to go back to the roots, go back to the basics of our origins and our identity, look back to our ancestry, because we stand on such big giant's shoulders. So I think Mapungubwe has done that for me. I finally can be able to say, ah, yeah, yeah, I'm from South Africa. So South Africa, yes, my identity is so beautifully intact by being a part of this experience. You know? What I'm promising the viewers they'll see is they would get to learn about the history of this country, the history of our people, get to learn about themselves. And hopefully this will be the first step into getting to know who they are as black people in relation to the whole world. Where now you have the benefit of being at home, you have never been removed. The little that you have lost or what you have lost due to colonialism and apartheid, you can always try and retrieve. We, we like behaving like we are renting who we are. We're not renting who we are. We're not renting this land. It's our land. This country belongs to us. This culture belongs to us. So the great stuff that we all discovered together is also those trips to Mpumalanga, to Limpopo, to places that I didn't know. I think I'm the only white guy here also, <laughs> probably. I remember we were all fired up, especially Mandla. Mandla would want us to just run to the camera. <laughs> when he saw something, he, he wanted to shoot it immediately. So working with Ntlantla's team at Full Circle, it was like you were part of a team of people that I invested in the preservation of this heritage. That heritage belongs to everybody, right? I think if anyone is interested in carrying the work further, it would be nice if this series would inspire or trigger other scholars, other researchers, other activists, practitioners to actually take the work forward because it seems so forgotten. No matter how much they try to erase our identity and our contribution to humanity, we keep coming back. When the credits roll at the end of episode six, the audience must be, we want more. That was amazing. This will blow your mind.